So, welcome back to Vintage Steel Garage. What we're going to do in this episode is get all the ancillaries back on the engine, get the new clutch on, get the engine back in, and then hopefully we're on the uh, we're on the road home, selling home, whatever, something like that. Anyway. So I'm going to work my way around the engine systematically, get everything on this side, which is the water pump, uh, the variable valve control for the idler pulley down here, move it round, turbo on the front, oil on the oil filter on the back, get the hoses on, get the cover on, get the inlet manifolds on, and we'll just do a bit of a, a fast time lapse build up of that. So here I am just putting all the ancillaries back on the engine. Uh, it's probably easier if you had both engines next to each other and just transfer them across. I'd actually taken them all off because I had a view to rebuild the engine, then realised it wasn't cost effective. So I'm just putting all the cam sensors on here now. So you've got, you've got the position of where the cam is. Uh, cam cover needs to go on. Inlet manifold, so there's a cam cover going on. Just torque that down um, until it cracks. Then the water pump going on, pipes for the water pump, some of the sensors on the back of the engine. So there's lots of little bits and little clips and things to follow over. I take lots of pictures beforehand so you can follow your process and uh, put them back on the new engine so they're ready to go in. So it shouldn't take too long to do really, probably about an hour to transfer all the bits across and then it's ready to go on, go back on. The last bit I put on was the heat shield and the turbo. So the engine's rebuilt now, ready to go in. We've got the new turbo on, uh, got the water pump on, got the inlet manifold on. Oil, water cooler, basically all the air pipes on the top and all the rest of it. And um, what we're going to move on to now, while we're out, got the engine out, we're going to put a new clutch in. And part of this new clutch is a new slave cylinder here, where this on an olden car, this would have just been the release bearing on a fork that came out. But now it's basically all in one. So you have hydraulic fluid coming down here, and this pushes this in and out so it's your really sparing and your slave master cylinder all in one so this whole cassette is going to be replaced on a quick release pipe so I suppose there is some improvement we've got to give them that haven't we so the new slave cylinder and release bearing is all in one that's going in now it's quite a simple job to do uh, just take those three screws out lift the whole assembly off uh, there's a quick release fitting on the outside which I haven't shown that comes out which is a flexible pipe Prize the whole thing out there put the new one back in nip those three screws up and that's it done nice and simple there we go ta-da new slave cylinder and thrust bearing all in one quite amazed actually that went in easy compared to a lot of other things we've been doing on this car so we're going to move on to the clutch now and you've got to put this um, end seal on here. Uh, this is a carrier just to help as it goes on so that the seal doesn't go inside out so I'll be keen to see how this goes on. I've never used one of these before. So it just seems to be the same diameter as that so I think it's a case of you just push it down and that is it on. Now it, it says not to oil this which is unusual because most seals I've always seen you oil them. And there is a mating surface down here on the sump, so that's going to need some sealant on, RTV sealant on. Uh, and then there's just some small screws that go in. So I'm just going to put some sealant on the bottom, along this edge here. I mean, ideally, you, you, you I don't know why it doesn't come very fitted, because ideally you'd um, drop the sump onto this onto it rather than trying to slide it in and scrape all the sealant off so I'm not quite sure what the thinking was there right so this goes in here facing this way that pushes down there then it's held at the bottom with a couple of long bolts go up here like this and these are only torqued up to seven foot pounds so there's not a lot in them really so 
So a little bit more of a speeded up montage here, just actually nipping up this seal here on the uh, on the crank, which is just behind the clutch and the flywheel. So just nip these up evenly. I think they were just something like 10 newton meters. And then we put the flywheel back on. The flywheel, even though it's got six bolts and it looks evenly spaced, they're actually slightly offset, so it'll only go on one way around. So you then put these torque drive screws in, and it's just a bit of a nightmare on a combination of torquing them up, angles, and all sorts of things, and then not actually losing where you're up to in the process. Uh, and then when you've done your final torque, I'd probably just put a bit of a mark on them so you know that you've actually done them. We've got a combination of lifting the engine and the gearbox now. Is that about level? Hmm? Yeah. No, that's too high. Right there? Yeah. Built. So after much frustration, we finally got the engine in. It was actually hydraulicking on the actual slave cylinder. The slave cylinder wouldn't let it go in, so we, we uh, bled that off. The slave cylinder compressed and the clutch would finally go in. So we've got one engine mount in, one bolt in, and we're happy, we're gonna move on from there and put the rest of the bolts in. Front end going on. <laughs> Busy night last night getting it together. We've now got the front radiator pack on, which has got the radiator in, the intercooler down there, and the aircon radiator. So that's all on. It's looking 
more like a car isn't it we've got a lot of the connections back in a lot of the air hoses back in uh, just got the injectors now to put back in the coil packs so far only two bolts I can't identify where they go so that's quite a thumbs up for an engine replacement uh, hose for the radiator to go on and um, what else have we got? We've got a bit of a list going on here now with the remaining things. So we've got fluids to go in, so we've got coolant to go in, which is the red coolant there. And also the crux of the problem, the wrong oil. So this is um, 520 oil and it's fully synthetic EcoBoost engine oil to the Ford specification. So that's pretty important we've got that. So fluids to go in, fluids to go in, clutch to bleed. And here's the remaining jobs, so bleed clutch, add engine oil, install injectors, small coolant hose, bumper on, connect headlights and coolants, wheels connect battery, plastic guard, charge battery. Injectors are now back in. Uh, what I did find is, uh, as I pushed them in, I just did a test fit, I pushed them in, took them down, took them out again, and those washers had squashed up nice like the original washers, so I'm happy with that. Got the coil packs in, you'll note the wires are out the coil packs because what I want to do now, it's a new engine, uh, it's got oil in, it's got coolant in, but we haven't got the oil pumped round and you'll kill an engine if you just try starting it. Um, a fresh engine that hasn't got oil everywhere, hasn't got the oil pump primed, you could potentially kill an engine or, well, definitely give it, um, definitely cause a lot of damage. So I'm just going to do a once round to check I've got everything in place. You can see it's quite a quite a uh, compact engine uh, there's absolutely no space for anything they've really done a good job from that point of view of, of adding a lot of things unnecessary things to the engine no I'm joking um, they've done a good job it's well packed in but it is a bit awkward to work on so the plan now is to get it to turn over which will get some pressure up in the fuel rail and some pressure up in the oil and the way I know I'm going to get the oil pressure up obviously I haven't got an oil pressure gauge on this what I'm going to do I'm going to crack this little banjo fitting here off on the turbo and I want to see oil coming out of here therefore I know the oil has got to the top of the engine and it's also going to be priming this turbo until I get oil coming out of there I'm not going to try starting it okay moment of truth so I've turned the engine over got the oil pressure up we think we've got the fuel there reconnected the coils if it does start, we'll leave it running, there will be some smoke coming from this area because of the oil all over the turbo that I couldn't help but leak out um, and hopefully no horrible noises, so fingers um, crossed Right, Grace Go for it, try starting it just as normal Right, keep trying it, it's just taking a while to get the fuel back in I left an inject wire off. <laughs> Happy? Yeah. Give it a little rev now. So initial rush run up tests seem good. You agree? Yeah. Right, so no coolant leaks, no engine oil leaks, no strange noises, so that's all good. So we start to put the front end back on and make it look like a car. We put its face back on.
Next up, road test. wheel straight so all done and dusted quick road trip all okay might need to bleed the clutch a little bit more but I just want to get a few miles on it now um, probably done half a mile if that uh, brakes are good, all feels nice, very happy, so all done. So we are now moving on to the next project, which is the 911 4S. Okay, so EcoBoost finished, road trip all good, tickety-boo, might just need to bleed the clutch a little bit more, it seems to be just dragging a little bit, but again I might do a few miles on it and see how it beds in after that. And we now moved on to the 911 C4S, which you should have seen before, or some of you may not have done. I picked this up. So if you want to see more content like this, and lots of, um, well, different cars. Obviously we finished with the Fiesta, we've done a Fit 500. Uh, get it back onto the Boxster, got the 911 to do. Also got the truck to do, want to get that back on the road this year. That hasn't been on since pre-pandemic, so that's what two years nearly three years ago uh, this one's just a 4.6 straight six with a bit of patina on it yeah so please like subscribe and uh, more content coming very soon bye for now